hey what's up guys today in this video we are going to look at a new package from laravel called pint pint is a code style fixer it is opinionated about the way things work but then the thing is the best part is that it will kind of you know take off the burden of you trying to think of what is the proper alignment if i have removed the unused imports or not you know, those kinds of stuff which i feel is very important when you are working with the team it does make a big difference of how well structured and how properly formatted the code is because then the code review is very easy and even when someone is reading your code it becomes quite easy right but then it does take time so these kind of packages definitely help and what I will do is, apart from telling you how Pint works, I will also show you how you can configure a Git hook, a pre-commit hook which is available with Git, so that it automatically formats your code before the code is committed. And on top of that, I will show you how you can also run your test cases before this formatting is done. So what happens is, if your, uh, if your test cases are failing, right, the code formatting will not work, the thing will stop the commit will not happen and then you can fix your code and then commit and before the commit is done the styling will be taken care of so without much delay let's get started so i have a clean laravel installation and if i run that application you'll see everything is fine i will open up safari 8000 right and this this just works and what package are we looking at we are looking at laravel pint this is the github package so as it says right it laravel pint is an opinionated php code style fixer for minimalists right and that's what it is it works on top of php cs fixer so if you already have php cs fixer you can continue to use it but if you don't have anything it's a nice wrapper to work with so let's see what all does it do the installation says that we need to do a composer require with a dev flag because this is obviously a dev dependency. So why don't we do that? I'll copy this command line code. I don't need the Laravel app to run. And this is done. And now let's see what does Pint do out of the box. Vendor bin Pint. Okay. So as you can see, it optimized some of the files because the user, it found no unused imports. So basically there were some unused imports, right? So it optimized it, it changed that, uh, it did from the auth service provider, the database seeder and the example test as well. So immediately you can see out of the box, it gives you a lot of stuff. Now, obviously, I could have also done a test. What test will do is it will simply show you what files it is going to change. Okay. And yeah, that's about it. So it doesn't really make a change of the files, but rather give you a snapshot of what it is going to do. If you want to run that, right? The next thing is, although by default, Pint has its configuration, but if you additionally want, you can create this Pint.json file and you can set that preset. I haven't done it, but yes, uh, you can do that. And additionally, if you wish, you can kind of specify this directory, which I don't think is right now necessary. Yes, one thing you can definitely do is let me go over here inside VS Code. Did it create a space? I think it did. No. Oh, yeah, it did. And that's why the JSON file was not coming properly. And I will copy this preset thing over here and yes uh, that's about it it won't make any difference i think yeah it still passes 53 files which is fine and it will continue to do its thing so for example if i go to models or no maybe inside controller let me create a new controller php artisan make controller oops user controller right over here let's just say i'll do user dollar user and return dollar user something like that right this is very basic code 
and now if you see where it is pinned the test will tell me something it says there are unused imports so it needs to fix that because the request is not used if i do something like request dollar request save and then run can you see everything passes similarly if i just keep this and run the test again it fails so this is good but then i want to automate it right because i may not you know every time remember that i need to execute this code where you know this thing just works right it is quite possible so how do we do that the best option is to automate things because then you don't have the you know headache or you, know, you don't need to remember that you need to execute these kind of stuff so git by default does that now in some of uh, in a previous video i had shown how to use husky which is a node package which gives you certain ways to hook into these events of git like i can hook into the pre-commit event of git and i can execute certain kind of stuff but then it does require an npm package which means you have to do you will carry a node modules folder inside your dev environment as well and why do we need to do that when it can be done without that npm package especially if if you are not working with you know a front end scaffolding and uh, if it is a node project right so yeah if 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 it is just php you can do it without that node package right so why don't we first do git in it okay once that is done i'll go inside the git folder do ls can you see there is a folder called hooks so go inside that and again i'll do ls can you see there are a lot of samples over here there is apply patch sample config message so on and so forth right what we are but interested in is the pre-commit there is pre-push pre-rebase receive and a lot of stuff we don't want to do that we are right now interested only in pre-commit so why don't we look at that pre-commit sample so there's this bin bash sh kind of thing then a lot of code if git revision parse verify head dev null okay a lot of things are going on i'm not going into the details of these things but what you need to do is if you want to have your own file just create a copy or maybe touch i'll create a file pre commit that's it no sample ls a l can you see this okay now this needs um permission to execute maybe i'll do hmm maybe not just keep it like this come back to our root folder where the code is okay why don't we first see if we are able to run the test so php artisan test and it works right so the first thing that we would like to do is run a test okay um so again vi dot git pre commit so the first thing that i will do is this hash slash bin slash sh and then let's just say echo running tests this will basically you know print out something in the console and then why don't we run php artisan test so with this in place let me get out of vim git add and git commit i'll add a message init project something like that right so i was uh, what i was thinking was correct it needs executable permissions so it says the git hooks pre commit hook was ignored because it's not set as executable fair enough let's do that chmod plus x dot git hooks pre commit and that's it now let's just change something this is going to fail but it will not pick up why don't we just make some change so that you know my git status shows that change right and then i will do git add dot and git commit oops made a small change something like this so it executed my test cases 
and then it committed right it if i see git log it says made a small change and the previous one was init project right so two commits are done but it did execute the code okay so that's fine but it also means that now i can do something like git hooks and then it was pre-commit come on so this is fine echo running code style fixer something like that and vendor bin pent that's it come back oops and let's make some more change response empty 200 just so that you know, things work and maybe what i will do is i'll have user right and now this is not being used right so ideally what should happen is when i commit this thing should get properly removed so i'll just use my previous commit and say checking pint as well okay right so can you see that thing went away and the request is still there and it fixed my unused import problem this is really nice correct because the only thing which i'm right now doing is adding a file and committing and everything is automatically being taken care of but in this in this code right there is a problem so i'll show you um code i think i was doing inside vim which is fine but i can actually pre-commit open it up here okay so i'll show you the problem first so i can so there is a test which executes to test that my application gives a 200 status code okay and the test for that is if i go inside tests features example test test the application returns a successful response so it asserts that the status code is 200 which is fine but what if i have dollar data it will fail right to ensure that it fails why don't we run the test and it fails perfect so what happens if i try to commit now let's just see failing test all right what just happened so the test executed it failed my style fixer still it got executed and if i'm not wrong look at the git log the commit happened now this is not right because ideally if my test is failing i shouldn't be committing right it should stop me so how do we do that well there is a little tweak in our code required and we should be able to do that now there could be multiple examples of how we can do that but what i found thanks to stack overflow is something which i'll show you all right so i'll show you i mean this is the code and i will walk you through what is happening so first obviously the echo is fine and then i have a variable called cmd cmd equals php artisan test okay and what i'm doing is i'm also taking status this status what it does is again based on my understanding i could be wrong but because i picked this code from stack overflow but it is working so what i understand is it checks the status okay now what is the status every command line uh, every command which you execute on console right it gives you a status code now if the status code if it is a success you get a status code of zero if you would have seen over here you know, this for example will give me a status code which is not zero this will be zero okay so what i'm that that's the reason what i'm doing is i'm checking what was the status when this you know, command line command got executed okay what what happened when this command got executed so i take that in the variable status and i'm checking the status if the status is equal to zero i just print tests passed but if it is not a zero which means there was some error in my code 
and that's the reason this php artisan test failed i'm returning which means this block will not execute similarly if i find some problem when executing pint which is a rare case i will get the status and if it is not zero again i return this is useful if you want to execute something after pint has been executed okay but in our case nothing is going to that kind of thing is not going to happen so you may even remove this but i just decided to keep it like that so now what do we do obviously now i will not be able to commit anything so let me change the variable name and i'll say failing test again so previously the code got committed i could see the git log if uh, just quickly go through that so this was the init i made a small change pint worked then the failing test got committed or rather the the code with a failing test got committed and now what we are trying to do is fix that code is here let's go back and do failing test again okay interesting enough this got committed again hmm have i made anything wrong over here because obviously yes this didn't work i think it is happening because there are multiple returns is it let me do this and try once more no this is not working at all all right so i finally figured out what was the problem so this return doesn't work i'll have to do an exit okay and then we can test through this as you can see now only this test pa uh, not passed rather this test got executed and the rest of the code didn't execute because this thing is not coming up right if i remove this condition for example can you see the pint also executed so this is what we wanted now if i do this data uh, can i see get status okay i don't have any changes i'll do one and gs for me is get status right um i have created a shortcut for that which gs can you see no okay maybe i don't know right alias to get status right so that's that's fine um anyways so with that i do get add this check failed code and it didn't commit why because git log doesn't show we have those failing test again again and things like that right and then it screwed up but now this is working because my last commit hasn't come up correct it stops once the test case fails now if i fix it everything is fine git log it says check fail code so as you can see now we have the entire flow in place where the hook is com configured we have our test case running if the test case fails then the pint will not work and it will not format the code so again just to confirm if again i have user and just remove this right and final commit do that and my import is gone so test cases pass code file changes are done and finally the commit is made we can see final commit over here so this is the beautiful configuration and this is the be best setup i would say if you want on your project because you know, your you can now focus only on writing code the formatting is taken care of imports are taken care of and it will automatically happen when you are trying to commit your code so that's about it guys that's how we configure paint and get hooks so that the test cases and paint work perfectly fine so that's about it guys let me know what you feel about this configuration do you think this will help you in your you know code formatting working with teams you know, i will be waiting for your comments if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel